Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today is the 28th of June 2019, it's 2 minutes before 7 o'clock local time. I just saw this chart and I thought it would be a good idea to just make a quick video of this pound yen on a 4 hour chart, trading at 136.918. Uh, this is not a trade video but I wanted to just uh, make a small follow up because today we did the third podcast with George and it was really really good and uh, this is a great example for what we're talking about and now you can see it also from the causality perspective first of all I mean uh, here what George calls the uh, herd mentality what I call fake resistance so the smart money draws this into the chart and then however with this move here takes out all the stops above this uh, price level here around 137.145 and uh, as we have discussed look here then before I did it it cleaned out the low at 136.04 so these are ongoing dynamics in the foreign exchange markets but now you can also see uh, what we talked about during the podcast in front of your eyes look at this this green bar once again it represents the group of dumb money traders who tries to buy a breakout to the upside okay so they are buying incoming the mail. Again, and that leads to smart money to push the price all the way down against these guys and look at that once the stops of these longies have been taken and they're kicked out shorties get into the market represented by the red bars they're trying to again enter the market expensively they think okay you know what the market is going down after this uh, big move and of course the smart money responds by pushing the price again to the opposite direction uh, drawing these uh, shorties into loss yeah and uh, now let's take a closer look at the games and the consolidation so and that's something I tried to explain in the podcast look not only does the smart money draw in those uh, chart games and fake support, fake resistance, or as George calls it, uh, herd mentality, but at the same time, look here. By doing this move, it lures more buyers into the market. So the dumb money uh, traders think, okay, we buy a breakout to the upside. So by doing the move down, they draw the longies into loss going for the stops. And here the, the second again, you see? And then once the price is here, then look what happens. Down money goes short thinking that this is a resistance level, placing the stops just above. And what happens? Boom! Smart, the smart money cartel pushes the price up against the shorties, going for the target stops. Yes? So whenever you approach a market, it's a good idea to look at all that and understand what's going on, to look at different time frames, to you know really internalize that psychology, uh, as George says. Because what I show here is what's going on yeah, in the market structure. And the Smart Money Cartel incorporates all these factors at the same time. Yeah, the positions, the stops, the limits, uh, the luring moves. Um, but also the other other things I've explained, the time and range principle, the dumb money tolerance principle. So of course, let me emphasize that point again. There is a dumb money tolerance, otherwise the price would never move. So while they managed to um, hunt all these big groups of dumb money traders and to eventually make everyone lose, no matter whether they trade reversals or breakouts or um, pullbacks, yeah, um, Still, however, they manage to uh, you know move the market in a way that makes sure that as a group none of these uh, traders actually succeed, and certainly not succeed in a consistent manner. And within the dumb money tolerance, of course, there will be dumb money positions and also smaller groups of uh, dumb money traders who uh, either were lucky or uh, who were sticky. But remember, regarding sticky dumb money positions. Often these don't use any stop and what happens is eventually they just have end up on the wrong side as it will happen eventually and then the price goes all the way against them going for their um, margin calls. So, you know, uh, 
basically you can understand now why the market from that perspective is such an efficient machine and succeeds in making the majority of participants lose. And that is quite counterintuitive. You would think, well, you know, there's only so much they can do. It's two-dimensional. No, they have incorporated all that and it's automated. It's all in their algorithms. They use or, <laughs> let's say, abuse the news for doing those kind of manipulation moves. And they do these things at the same time. Yeah, taking out stops as well as luring new traders into the market, um, as well as, you know, um, pricing in the money flow. So I've shown all that day by day. Uh, I've, sh I've made lots of uh, trade videos. I've made um, the videos explaining those dynamics. And now with the podcast, we also you were able to see how a trader approaches all that with a minimum of tools. And, you know, by focusing on, okay, what's the general principle? And then by having nice tools which work for him. So I suggest anyone um, first understand how the market works and the, the content is there you know um, check the threads check the videos um, put some time into studying it then um, have a trading plan which makes sense yeah so put together like uh, define and do it in writing how you want to approach the market what's your exact uh, strategy how do you want to trade and then test which kind of tools, which kinds of settings will help you in that uh, context. And then go and um, do a lot of analysis by looking at the past, how it would have been in the past, and then go and once you um, succeeded in that, go on a demo account and see whether it actually works also live. <coughs> and then at some point down the line, then you can uh, start to trade small and then at some point trade bigger after you have gone through all these concepts. Now, you can see that it's not enough to have uh, good entries and exits. It goes uh, beyond that. Yeah, you need to have a complete po position sizing plan in place, a risk policy. Uh, you know, there's a lot of work involved in uh, being able to trade um, in the short term in particular these days because um, otherwise, you know, you will just um, fail. And again, uh, I recommend anyone, even if you are a completely manual discretionary trader, even then go and, you know, test uh, strategies in, um, on the strategy tester with tick data. And you will see that if most strategies will completely die off and they don't even work in the first place, and even they work for some time, they will eventually completely die off. Then ask yourself, why is that? Why did that particular strategy die off? Even though sometimes visually it looks very good. You look at past um, data and you look at the signals, the signals look quite good. Then, however, you test it, and then under realistic conditions, it actually doesn't work overall. That's something to take into account. You will be surprised how some uh, systems which look good from the outside are actually not good at all once you run them on real data. Do that exercise. And, uh, of course, be careful not to fall into all these uh, traps. So, look, um, do not overemphasize indicators as such. Yeah, they're just tools like a meter to measure something in a certain context but don't you know uh, focus on the indicator itself you know otherwise the game would be easy if you would have just a slightly optimized moving average you only know, could trade well that doesn't work yeah even if it's an adaptive uh, moving average based on artificial intelligence which adjusts itself even that is then not not the holy grail yeah you need to really really um, internalize what drives the price in what kind of situations, what is the norm, and how do you um, need to approach that reality. So limit yourself to a certain setup, for example, yes? Don't try to trade everything. If you try to trade everything at the same time, just to, you know, have more to do, that's a bad idea because most likely you, you won't have any um, re consistent results. So, yeah, um, I think the podcast today was really, really good. I uh, recommend you to watch it um, and to really watch it several times if necessary. I know it's a bit long, like two hours, but uh, there's knowledge in there which you won't find anywhere else. And uh, again, you know, we should really be thankful towards George that he took the time to explain all that. And it's fantastic. And it's a great uh, complementary um, 
uh, content to the market causality because it's an approach which comes from a different corner but which is talking about the same thing. And uh, if you are one of those people who really still believes in supply and demand, you know, sorry, but you're behind the moon. You have no clue what, what the reality of today is. And I don't care, you know, whether you are like an academic or whether you are like an... Uh, uh, even if you're a good trader, you know, look, even if you believe in supply and demand, I mean, come on, you know, after this evidence, you have to rethink your assumptions, okay? And that's not us too much. I have experienced that people who are invested in one way or another in their belief system, they're not willing to adjust their views, yeah, uh, because that would imply that the basics of their beliefs, you know, are actually not solid. But what do you expect? There's a reason why over 90% are lose in Forex, yeah, and also let me say, uh, you know, this is not conspiracy theory or anything, it's just a reality, yeah, you do not do... You do not need to believe into in the uh, Illuminati or something. It's just how you know a system works that has been there for a long time and which is in the hands of certain entities. Yeah, the entities they have their own interests and they will not you know compete against each other. They will collude because it leaves them all better off. I've talked about it a lot. I don't need to repeat that one again here. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really happy that. Uh, you know, these days all this work is out there. I've made additional uh, videos where I demonstrate a lot of things, even some trades and all that. And I will continue. You know, I have other things in the pipeline which I will do in that context. And it will be nice to, you know, um, continue the, the, the podcast. There are also other people uh, which were introduced to me in the in that context. Uh, other traders who understand manipulation. I've um, seen some ones on the internet. Maybe I'll contact them and see whether they want to participate in the podcast in some way. It's always good. You know, as a trader, you should always do your best to learn from others. You know, there are many ways of doing things. Always be open-minded. Always try to get better, you know. Uh, you have to constantly work on yourself, you know. It's not that, um, like, uh, there's a complete solution. Nothing can be improved, optimized. You know, of course, the causality will not change. It, it won't change. Because that's how the market works, yeah. Uh, but you know, your approach towards the market maybe changes or needs an adjustment. You will always be a price take on the buy side. We are not able to uh, move prices in any way, yeah. The price makers are able to move the prices, the algos, not us. But we can decide when we buy, when we sell, how much we buy, how much we sell, how we manage positions. That's what we can, you know, decide. So that's why George said, you know, in the first uh, podcast, I think. Look, uh, you know, it's a blessing. <laughs> the manipulation is a blessing because at the end of the day, you know, it allows you to not be a victim in this game if you have done your homework. And I agree with that, you know. However, at the same time, I also see the uh, damage which this market manipulation imposes on whole economies, yeah. I mean, you can't ignore that neither. So, uh, you know, there's definitely also... Uh, consequences from in that context but no matter you know what you believe I mean if you want to be a decision maker in that environment you are well off uh, better off you know accepting how the realities are yeah whether you like it or not don't judge uh, you know don't get emotional accept how the reality is that's step one and just observe how it is how these things interact then, you know, once you have seen a lot, then you can, you know, try to derive general rules. And then, you know, you can um, derive more specific rules for yourself um, as a decision maker. But, uh, you know, and that's also what George, uh, when he talks about boundless mindset, that's what he means. Don't have, make, don't have assumptions. Don't come opinionated, you know. Um, the closer your understanding is to the reality, the better for you. And all our work is really focused on that point, I think, um, that at the end of the day, you know, I mean, when I started this uh, thread, uh, you know, I was really going in, you know, with like exposing these manipulation games as it hasn't done before, yeah? I mean, at the end of the day, nobody was able to show it like I showed it, to prove it like I proved it. They were just all showing naked charts and all that. And, you know, to I worked so much, you know, uh, out of goodwill to do that. And uh, 
you can't ignore it. Sorry. <laughs> you don't need to like me. I don't need you to like me, uh, but I need you to uh, accept the how the what the evidence is. You can't ignore the evidence, and you don't need to like the evidence neither. But uh, when you, if whenever you want to, you know, do something and fix, let me tell you, better do the studies first, understand all the principles I've explained, in all the videos I put it on your plate basically, and this will be a basis to you know uh, rethink your approach. And it's not easy. I mean, look at the. Uh, Attention to detail, George applies to his trading. I mean, it's impressive, you know. I mean, you got a taste of that with a third podcast. This man is really prepared, you know. He has a detailed plan in place. Everything is predetermined, you know. So he's taking smart risk, you know. It's a, for him, it's at this point a low-risk activity because not only are the odds on his side, but, you know, all the scenarios are accounted for. But even if you have a system which is not that precise, it, you can still, you know, do well. I mean, even if you have a system that has some drawdown and, you know, but which uh, incorporates those aspects such as, you know, the, the level hunting and the, the fake games, um, the manipulation games, then, you know, you will have better chances as someone who believes in supply and demand and, you know, puts three standard indicator, MACD, moving average RSI on his chart and then tries to, you know, uh, trade according to the behavior of these uh, indicators. Okay, um, I just wanted to say these things. Uh, I do some other short videos about specific aspects. I think that's better uh, rather than, you know, doing long videos. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to the next podcast as well. The, um, George will probably show TMA, a very powerful tool. I've posted some... Uh, um, Trade videos I, I was able to edit and a, a scalping session and all that stuff. Uh, and I will post some shorter videos in the future if I have time about those particular topics. Um, and uh, yeah, and there's more to come from my side as well. So, uh, but you know, I will go step by step. <coughs> Yeah, and you know what? If you are someone who's, who realizes on the basis of all that what, what's shown here that you're not made for this game or you, you can't put in the time or, you know, it's just not working for you, well, congratulations, you know, I mean, there's no shame realizing that. You will possibly um, save yourself a lot of pain and, and losses. So all the best to you, you know. Um, this is a complex game. Don't be a fool. Don't be one of these guys who come with an ego and attitude. And they think they know and they understand. Look, I have seen so many traders also, you know, who, who, for example, do well over some time and they think they figured it out and then they crash, you know, completely. That's happened again and again. And these guys tend to be quite arrogant before the crash. So the market will just humble them eventually. So whenever you see someone like that, just run away. Good traders, they respect other traders' work. You know, they have a lot of respect for people who develop that knowledge and are willing to show it. Most traders, they are not willing to show these things. You know, they they stay behind closed doors all their life, maybe. You know, they, they're not interested in helping or showing or explaining or distributing or sharing knowledge in any way. But at the same time, I also think it's fair to say that no great trader will show you everything neither. Yeah, I mean, George has certain things he doesn't want to expose. And I have certain things like the meter levels I don't want to expose just in the public, you know, also accept that, respect that, you know, we have uh, this other people's work, you know, if you are uh, someone with a developed mindset, you will be thankful, appreciative for everything that's uh, given to you for free, but you also respect, you know, where, where the limit is, you know, when people say, okay, you know, I want to show that, but the rest, you know, you put in the work, please, you know, we will... They're those guys, they, they want, when you give them something, they just want more, 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 more. You give them something for free, they want more. You give them something for free, they want more. You know, don't be one of these guys. They, they will never make it. They, they try to, you know, live on the back of other people's work. And it's okay to, you know, uh, incorporate uh, the, the uh, tips and advice of other traders, but at the end of the day, you know... Um, as it was said before, at the end of the day, you have to also walk the walk, not talk the talk. And, and, and above all, stop fighting you know, with other traders on forums and all that. I mean, come on. How sad is that? Don't waste your own and other people's time. 
Life is too short. Better put that time into working on your stuff. <laughs> you know, don't waste your time. Don't go on those uh, threads and discuss about what music to listen to while you're losing money and all that stuff. It's just stupid and trolling other people and, you know, uh, attacking other people and gossiping and, you know, I mean, come on, you can have a bit of fun, that's fine. Nobody has something that's fun. But if that's all you're doing, I mean, you're wasting everybody's time. You're not contributing anything to the community. You understand? And unfortunately, most forums these days, they're like that. They have become a complete dumb money pool. Like 99% of the content there is complete garbage. Yes, I mean, that's what we learned as well. Most of the stuff shown there is useless. And I, you know, uh, I want to change it maybe in the future. I want to... And this year, whatever, somehow we started a movement, I guess, whatever that means. But this is the first time where, you know, smart money stuff is shown to dumb money, I think. I think. And uh, so I'm really happy about, you know, that um, now this network is there. And uh, also other traders are willing to talk more about their stuff and don't fight, you know. Um, instead, join the movement, uh, contribute. Um, be respectful towards others. I mean, people like George, he's a gentleman. I mean, you know, his principles and, uh, you know, he will say, look, I love you, uh, but I love, I don't love your, your work, for example. Live with that, you know, he will be honest. He, he's a straight shooter, as he says. But he's a gentleman. He has clear principles, you know. So the onus is on you to respect these people. He doesn't, what did, you know, he, what was his benefit of helping others and showing that? Zero. Yeah, he did it all for free. He didn't charge anything, nothing. Uh, of course, you've got uh, good friends via that and nice feedback, but feedback, he doesn't need feedback. Yeah? If it works for him, it works for him. Uh, friends are always good to have. But then there are also these people who just, you know, attack and and criticize and, you know, get so emotional about things. Don't do that, guys, okay? Don't be so emotional. Don't fight other people. Respect them. Yeah, don't waste your time on... Look, I... I mean, at the very beginning when I was exposing this manipulation, people thought it's all made up. And, um, you know, I got attacked also like by a lot of weird people. And most of them disappeared or even turned around and said, later on, sorry, you know, I mean, actually, this is for real. I thought this all made, made up or something. And a year later, they were like, oh, wait a second, I was wrong. But, you know, before that happened, they... They really attacked me, they, they, they did some weird stuff, and it all didn't work, of course, but, you know, it's quite embarrassing. Like, you feel ashamed, not for yourself, for them, you know? There are some people who just were not risen well, or who, who need to work on themselves first. I mean, go go home, you know? If you're one of these, go home and work on your personality. Don't even think about trading and competing with some of the brightest minds on the planet. You, you're not, you know, ready for that. You know, first be a proper person and... And work on your values and beliefs and, and self-image, yeah? I mean, and you know, if you have such a big ego and you're so arrogant and and you just want to provoke people and, you know, put them down and you have nothing to offer yourself, I mean, go away. Yeah? And you will, you're faceless, nameless, you're a keyboard warrior, yeah? You leave nothing. Like, people will completely forget about you anyways. Okay? Be different. If you want to leave a mark, then, you know, do something significant, okay? Um, as simple as that. So please, don't waste my time, you know? If you, if you don't like the stuff, then go, don't watch it. You know, you don't need to watch anything. You know, uh, it's all good. And anyways, uh, I'm positive. And I, as I said before, most people are lovely, yeah? Most people are nice. That's what I believe. And I also got so many nice messages and feedback and all that and I made so many friends around the world you know uh, by doing that so that's fantastic you know and I encourage any other trader do that you know share something you don't need to share everything but share something uh, you know give back something um, when when I started out I would have loved to have like a bit of input like that I and I tell you what that's um, I when thinking back I always try to figure out stuff on my own you know but in life, look, if you can have a mentor, you know, accept the mentor. It can make a huge difference. Yeah? Don't always try to fight all each battle on your own. That's what I did. I mean, I, I did everything on my own, you know, and it takes a long time. It takes much longer, of course. Then, you know, you 
you are also stronger in the end, but it's a more difficult route. And at least, you know, um, have some kind of communication exchange with other good people, people you can trust, um, people who um, are not only takers, but also give back, um, people who, you know, um, yeah, bring something to the table. And even if it's, uh, you know, uh, positive energy and support, emotional support, you know, everybody can do something. You can always share somebody's work and, you know, uh, comment on it. Don't be one of these jealous, frustrated losers, <laughs> you know. Please don't. You know, it's it's just not uh, it's just not worth it. Anyway, I wanted to drop those thoughts today. All the best and goodbye.